Welcome to Dear SQL DBA, a podcast for and about SQL Server DBAs. Now, today's episode is about getting a job as a DBA, but from a different perspective than I've talked about before. Today's episode is about a C-sharp developer who wants to become a DBA. Here's the question. Dear SQL DBA, I've been a C-sharp developer since 2000. I want to move to be a DBA. I've started getting involved at user groups and SQL Saturdays, but nobody wants to hire me as a DBA yet. I've been trying to move to other companies, but my resume is strongly inclined to show my C-sharp front-end experience. I know for a fact that I'm really good on SQL as I keep solving problems in every other project, but nobody really seems to pay attention to the database. I've noticed that when applying for positions, I get called for my C-sharp experience, but not when I apply to only SQL jobs. Should I find a junior DBA job and take a pay cut? Sincerely, C-sharp developer. Now, this is not an easy transition to make from a more senior level developer job to a DBA. And for you DBAs listening, think about trying to do the opposite. Think about trying to go from a more senior level DBA job and getting into a developer job. You're like, wow, okay, that is a tricky transition. Even if I've done a little bit of the work, how do I make that leap? And hiring managers really look for direct experience and interviews tend to be, you know, pretty advanced unless you're going for an entry level job. But On the other hand, it's not like going for the more entry-level job is a slam dunk either. It's hard to find junior DBA jobs, and they actually can be pretty competitive because there are people who want to get into being a junior DBA, and sometimes a hiring manager will look at someone who is more experienced in, say, C-sharp and be a little hesitant about them. They may be hesitant because they are concerned, well, if you take a pay cut and end up in a job where you have to do grunt work, you may not thrive in that environment, right? You've been working in a technical field for a while now, and you're probably used to not having to do all of the stuff that nobody else wants to do, right? Guess what junior DBAs get to do? So it's, it's, It's a tough job to land for anyone, and I don't think your C-sharp experience gives you an advantage when it comes to being a junior DBA. Your C-sharp experience doesn't really help you sell yourself there. Now, I do think there's a lot, if you wanna get into being a DBA, I have a training plan online that's a free training plan for junior DBAs, and it helps you work through really like essential core skills making sure you don't have too much downtime or data loss. And I would still learn that stuff because you really, you don't want to have big gaps in those areas, but I wouldn't try to sell yourself as a junior DBA from the position that you're starting at as somebody with 16 years of C sharp experience, because I think that you may have a better angle and a better career path that, doesn't necessarily go through the junior DBA route. So let's talk about that. I think the biggest thing for you to figure out is what, like your dream job as a DBA, what would it be like? Would you still be writing code, but as a database administrator? And what type of code? Are you interested in learning new variations of scripting languages? What type of environments excite you? Do large environments or cloud environments, do you, does that give you kind of a spark where you're like, oh, that would be really cool to work in it? There are a lot of options for people who do have developer experience as DBAs now because of the popularity of DevOps that's growing and because of virtualization as well as cloud environments. So some options for being a DBA now I mean, there is the more traditional kind of developer DBA who designs schemas and architectures and indexes. But there's even more 
ways that knowing how to write good code can really, really work for you now. So for people who are interested in learning PowerShell, for automating large environments and managing large environments, that can be a huge skill. For teams where you need someone to help figure out how are we going to safely and efficiently deploy software schema changes and other changes to the database. There's lots of need for code in helping build these deployment tools and automating how to stage and release and execute database code deployment. Coding skills are huge with that. And there's also areas of SQL Server like building CLR components to execute .NET code inside the SQL Server and also developing the expertise to know when is that a really useful thing and when is that not going to be as efficient as using T-SQL. Now this last one, I think the CLR components, it, it's more of a niche thing than the others that I've mentioned because not everyone is going to be writing code for the CLR as a DBA. But if it is something you already have experience in or that you just find fascinating, it could be part of a really cool larger package that you develop. So I think really mapping out first as a DBA, where is, is there an intersection between where I've been as a developer and where I want to go as a DBA and what kind of technologies, you know, what would, a, what would my dream job look like? Maybe there's a couple different flavors of it, but really figuring out what that is and how those interact. Once you know what your dream DBA job is, you want to write a resume for that target job. One thing that really jumped out at me from the question is, is where it says, hey, well, my resume is strongly inclined to show, show my C-sharp experience. And I, I totally get why it would be that way. You have a lot of C-sharp experience. But the thing about resumes is resumes are as much about where you want to go as they are about what you've done. And I'm not at all saying to make anything up. Do, do not ever lie on your resume. That's not what I mean by that. What I mean is over those 16 years, you have a ton of experience and you have to select for your resume what is the relevant experience to list. You always are editing the narrative of yourself in your resume and you need to create one that highlights the projects that you talk about, the problems that you solved in SQL Server. You said, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm good at SQL because I've solved problems with it. Those are the things that you want your resume to call out specifically. Those are the things that are gonna have the people with the SQL Server jobs interested in you, right? So you want to not just make your resume longer, these days for a technical person, two pages is a pretty you know long resume. I wouldn't go over the front and back of a page. So this means heavily editing. It doesn't mean you have to delete your current resume. It is perfectly normal as a more senior level technical person to have multiple resumes that just have different narratives of your experience because you have so much experience that there really is enough to have multiple narratives. You've worked on a lot of stuff. It is also normal, and this may sound like a lot of work, it is totally normal to tailor those resumes for specific jobs as you apply to them. So you have sort of multiple base resumes. One of them is gonna highlight your C-sharp stuff. One of them is gonna be highlighting your SQL Server experience and tailored for that dream job. But when you apply to a job and you're going to send in your resume, you're going to save a version of the SQL Server resume and look at what they're looking for in their ideal candidate and highlight the parts of you that match that ideal candidate. This means really applying the, the, to jobs that you really care about, right? Not just any DBA. You don't want just any DBA job. You want the DBA job that's really gonna fit with what you bring to it and the skills and experience you have. Now, resumes are important, but resumes don't do everything. I actually think that networking is much 
more important when it comes to getting a job than a resume. Oftentimes, in my experience, the resume actually only comes in after someone already wants to hire you. So it is worth investing in your resumes because it's, it can have really help you land something, but you also want to adjust your networking strategy to be really geared towards your target job too. And you have a great start on this because you've mentioned you're already started going to SQL Server user groups. You've already started going to SQL Saturdays. That's fantastic. And for some folks, they can happen to meet the right folks who are going to hire them just through those two things, but you haven't been that lucky. And a lot of this is about talking to people and making your own luck. It is worth talking to recruiters. And I get it. Some recruiters are really slimy. This is kind of like walking through, walking through a tough area. Not all recruiters are bad and recruiters can give you helpful feedback on things like, okay, here's, Here's what my dream job looks like. Here is my resume. You as a recruiter, do you think this resume is going to get me to my dream job and my experience? Or where, where do you think that I should build this? Can you introduce me, you know, get me an interview with someone for this type of job? Any interview you get for a dream job, you always want to follow up after the interview and send a thank you note. Thank you very much for interviewing me. Try to get that contact information. If you don't get the job, you can always, and I encourage you to, in a very friendly way, ask for feedback. You won't always get it. And you want to make sure to ask this in a very obviously courteous, you know, could you, I would very much appreciate it if you could do me a favor and give me some tips on what I can improve so that I can get this kind of job in the future because it really is my dream that kind of language. You don't want it to sound like I'm bitter that I didn't get the job and I want to know why, right? And sometimes you can get a little bit of feedback that way. Another thing that you could do is try out some code camps or some hackathons. As a developer, there are a lot of these events and you could go to them and when you're participating in these, you can tell folks, hey, I'm really trying to build my database skills and I would love to try to work on these parts of the project as much as possible. This can be great as it can give you more projects and experience for your resume about things that you've done that are database related, as well as introduce you to, to people and say, hey, do you, do you know folks in the area who are doing DevOps? or who are doing cool things with databases where coding skills can be really helpful because that's the kind of work I'm really passionate about. Possibly those folks can give you tips on how to land those jobs or leads on jobs that you don't know about. Maybe they can help give you another view of feedback on, can you look at my resume and tell me if there's areas where you think I can improve it, right? So you're, you're already starting on the networking track I, sometimes it takes longer than others on that networking track. I do think with your experience, code camps and hackathons, they could be fun too, as well as give you more options for leads. Because finding the right lead and connecting with the right person is really often that little bit of magic that pulls it off. I know that this has been a tough path for you. It is a very difficult transition to make from a more senior level developer into the DBA world. And just know that it is natural that it isn't easy. It's not you. <laughs> this is a difficult leap. But the cool thing about this leap is when you land it, when you find that right job, and if you find one where you can combine your developer experience and then build your database experience, this combination is fantastic. And having these skills together can really make you into a, a kind of unicorn. Someone who can combine skills that are rarely found together and where you have a really unique and powerful insight and a fantastic you know, career path to build on. So I think it's well worth it for you to invest the time in this job search and to really find the right job because being a developer is very much in demand. Being a DBA is very much in demand. So if you can really put those two things together, you are really gonna be in a sweet, sweet spot. 
Thanks for joining me for Dear Sequel DBA. I'm Kendra Little, and I'll see you again next week.